in the Becca department. It's going to sad days. It's the Becca department's last game, last baseball game of the semester. It's a gloomy day here at the swamp, but we'll see if San Fran we'll see if the uh, Gators can provide some uh, provide some light on the field here with their play. And I'll be doing the announcing today. My name is Joe Perello, and here with my partner Daniel Comer. It's a great day for some baseball, Joe, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, uh, I don't. I don't mind a cloudy day once in a while for a game. You know, change things up. No, not at all. Might be a little difficult for the outfielders to uh, pick up on fly balls, but I guess time will tell. From my experience of playing when I was younger, the clouds, the gloomy clouds, they always did give a tough blend into the baseball. But if I know SF State Gators baseball, I know they're going to be fine today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a big series for the Gators as it's their last regular season um, home stretch as they have a four game. This is the first game of a four game series with the Cal Poly Pomona Broncos. Yeah, it's going to be a huge series, actually, for both teams. Cal Poly comes in with a 24-17 and 17 record overall, and the Gators are 24-16 and 16 overall, 17-15 and 15 in the conference play. The Gators are 15-5 and 5 at home, while Cal Poly Pomona is 7-9 and 9 on the road. And they're both fine for playoff spots today in the CCAA. Um, Pomona is in the sixth spot, only a half game back from Cal Poly. Uh, excuse me, SF State. So today starts the beginning of a huge series for both teams. Yeah, it's going to be a really evenly matched series, as you touched on, you know, just a half game separating them in the standings. So nearly identical records. We should have a – should be the start to a good series. And uh, coming in, the Broncos have now lost three straight. So we'll see if the Gators can make it four. And uh, on the other side, San Francisco State has won two of their last three games, and they're six and four in their last ten. Something to look out for today is definitely the pitching on both sides. San Francisco State has been throwing the ball pretty well as of late, but they're going up against a guy in Caleb Reyes who's going up for conference pitcher of the year with these type of stats. 1.32 ERA with a 6-1 record, eight games started, one complete game, and 61 in its innings pitch. He's only given up nine runs this year. Yeah, um, safe to say that batters aren't exactly seeing the ball well out of his hands with a 174 uh, batter's average against. Yeah, and uh, the Gators are trying to rebound after a tough game um, their last matchup on Tuesday against Cal State East Bay they suffered a 10 run loss with the final score being 11 to 1 so the pitching and the battings both trying to uh, change that drastically here today Yeah, another interesting note for today, the Gators have lost, coming into this game, they've lost four straight against Cal Poly Pomona. Um, last season, they were swept by the Broncos in a four-game series. And overall, the Gators are 17-45 and 45 all-time against Cal Poly Pomona. Let me ask you something, partner. From the games we have saw from San Francisco State so far this year, what do you think some keys would be for them to be able to get a victory today, and not only that, stay consistent with their play throughout the whole rest of the weekend, going into the doubleheader tomorrow, and then finishing off the series on Sunday. You're putting me on the spot, partner. No, no, that, that's uh, that's a good question. I think, uh, you know, I think that that well, starting with today, they need to be patient with Reyes on the mound because, you know, as you mentioned, he's uh, been throwing the ball extremely well I think you want to make him work and at least if you can't get runs off him at least get his pitch count up get him out of the game early and I think that's that would be a good way to start off the series get the Gators moving in the right direction and uh, 
yeah, I think, um, you know, pitching-wise, I think they just have to keep doing more of the same thing. You know, as we've seen the games we've seen, they've just been battling and uh, e even arguably getting stronger as the game goes on. So I think that's something we could look for, uh, look for more of today. Most definitely. I Just to touch on what you had to say right there, I think a big part of today is going to be Nathan Shin for the Gators. He's had an all right start of the season, but if he can pick himself up today and give them a really nice outing and eat some innings up coming into the first game of this series, that could be a huge start for the Gators, and it could help them be consistent throughout the rest of the series. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I couldn't agree more. I also think that um, I think the Gators need to have a uh, – more of the same energy that we've uh, seen and heard out of their dugout because that's propelled them late in games when they um, when they need to rally. So hopefully, you know, see see the same involvement today. Now we're taking the field, your SF State Gators. And now it is time for the National Anthem. At this time, for those who are able, we ask for you to please rise, remove your caps for the playing of the National Anthem. And now the Gators have officially taken the field. As we said earlier, Nathan Shin will be on the mound for SF State today. He's posted a 5.11 ERA so far this year with a 4-3 win-loss record. He's had nine appearances, no complete games, 44 innings pitched with 50 hits and 25 earned runs given up to go along with nine walks and 48 strikeouts. Shin's going to have to be on today. The Gators are going to get this W. Yeah, starting it off for the Broncos, leading off is going to be uh, the left fielder, Brent Cotto, who leads the team in average at 311. So Shin's going to have his hands full right, right from the start here as we see him taking his warm-up pitches. Not only is Coda leading the team in average, but he's also leading the team in on-base percentage. So I think it's, you could say it's safe to say he's one of their better hitters. Possibly maybe even the better best hitter on this team. Yeah, uh, safe to say the most consistent for sure. Today's starting battery for the Gators. Behind the plate, number nine, Max Sunton. And on the mound, number 22, Nathan Chin. One thing to point out today is going with Shin pitching for the Gators. The Broncos decided to go with a uh, right-handed hitting heavy lineup, which is 
more of like a pl platoon option for them. So they have that advantage going on their side today. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the uh, the Broncos have three switch hitters in their lineup, as you said, partner. So yeah, they can have they'll have righties up the whole time no, against Shin. It is a nine. good strategy. We'll see how it works out for them. And likewise, the Gators have three switch hitters. Not a not something you see every day today in baseball anymore. The the switch hitters becoming a thing of the past. And Shin gets ready to deliver pitch number one, and it's fouled off. Oh, and that one was within reach of the Gators' third baseman, but uh, just wasn't able to haul that one in. He was coming up on the fence there. I think uh, he was being a little bit cognizant of that. First pitch was at 3.02. And Shin toes the slab for pitch number two. Looks in for the sun, and here he comes with the delivery. And that one's fouled off again down the third baseline, this time out of play. Dakota waits for the pitch, down 0-2. And he grouts out one to third base, and it's under the glove of Heimovitz. As Coda rounds first, and they're safe think that one will be scored as a single what do you think partner I would say so but if you're Coda nothing to hang your head about nice 0-2 pitch there got it off the end of the bat just got to come out this hitter now yeah, that shows you why he's hitting 311 right there down 0-2 still battling swung at all three pitches he saw to start off the game and this is Darius Price the DH for the Broncos up at the plate he takes that one a little high See if uh, Shin can forget about that after. Not not the ideal start. As he throws over there to first, trying to keep Coda honest. Shin delivers, and he blows that one past Price. A lot of movement on that fastball from Shin, and you're going to see a lot of that today for the Broncos. Yeah, Shin's velocity looks good right now as he throws over to first again. Coda back safely. And that one's fouled off behind home plate by Darius Price. That's two strikes again for Shin. And that one's hit on the ground a third hard. One out of the second, and called safe. Just got there before the ball, apparently. That's one out for the Gators. They got the leadoff, man, though. I mean, got the job done. It's a great job by Shin attacking the zone no, there. Gets the, the, the ground ball. Eight, Possible double play ball. They get the lead runner. That's all that matters there. Got to get one there, and they get the lead one. Yeah, it's a tough one. That was a good double play ball. It was hit really hard on the ground, but just a tough one to turn. Price had just enough speed to get down the line here. And uh, now the center fielder, Nin Burns, the second, comes up to bat for the Broncos. Shin's going to want to keep Burns off the base paths. He's 11 for 11 in stolen base attempts this season. And he blows that one past him. And 
And the balls look good coming out of Shin's hand today. And he delivers. That one's fouled Go. off. Like I said earlier, partner, he's got great command going for him right now. A lot of movement on that fastball as well. Man, that's the third batter in a row. Shin's got two strikes on. His command's looking good. He looks at the runner at first and delivers. That one's in the dirt, picked up, and doesn't matter. The runner advances to second. That's a great read by Darius Price over there at second base now. Ball in the dirt. Two strike count. He's reading it for something to go into the dirt, and he takes the bag. That's our first runner in scoring position of the day. That one's in the dirt again, but a good stop by Sugden. Keeps him at second. A few bad breaks here to start for the Gators. The uh, close call at first on the potential double play and the ball in the dirt, letting the runner advance. Let's see if they can... Uh, See if they can get out of this little mini jam here in the first. And that pitch uh, missed just high from Shin there. Burns battling. Shin looks at the runner at second and delivers. That one just low. Great at bat from Burns as he takes the walk. If you're Shin, it's not the end of the world here. Now you have a double play ball chance. Yeah, correct you are. Now batting the first baseman, but number 16, Marco they have the speed Mello of burns on, on uh, first base, so it's going to need to be a hard hit ball to get that double play going. That you are correct. At least, at least he has someone in front of him, though, to keep him from stealing second. <laughs> That one fired in by Shin for strike number one. And Marco Malerbo comes to the plate for the Broncos, the first baseman. He's started in all 40 games for the Broncos this year. And that one gets by first base. One run in for the Broncos and runners on the corners here with one out. Tough chopper to handle there for the Gators infield. Looks like that one just hit the lip over there by third, or first base, excuse me. Just took a hop over his head. That was a good piece of hitting there by Malerbe. He he just uh, did with it what he could. Didn't try to do too much with it. Now batting the second baseman, number 14. And again, if you're Shin, there's nothing to hang second your head about is. so far in this inning. You've got a lot of good ground balls you should probably already be out of this inning yeah just another bad break there for the Gators you know just adding to the the ones they've already had to start this game and he tried to hold up there wasn't able to strike number one this is Cedric Perez here the second baseman up for Cal Poly Pomona Leads the team in walks and hit by pitches. He's a patient hitter. And he's down 0-2. He's Shin's been consistently starting starting these batters off well. A really good command. Like as you said, partner, just balls uh the ball has eyes today for the Broncos. And he delivers. Blows that one by him for strike number three. That's two outs in the inning. See if the Gators can just get one more and keep the damage to a minimum at one run. Yeah, that's a huge strike out there for Shin. Now batting the third baseman, number 34, Tyler Chafee. Foul tipped for strike number one. 
Another first pitch strike for Shin. This is the third baseman, Tyler Chaff, who grounds that one through the first and second baseman. And another run is in for Cal Poly Pomona. It's 2 nothing Broncos. I think it could be a fair assessment that that might be the hardest hit ball so far this inning. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to agree, partner. And uh, uh, contrary to what Chaffee, the third baseman for the Broncos, uh, normally produces, he's a... He's a big strikeout home run guy, but they're a solid contact for the single. And, you know, credit the Broncos. They've, they've done a great job just putting the ball in play and making the Gators make the plays. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They're, they're, uh, they're putting the onus on the Gators' defense to try to, you know, try to make the plays, like you said. And just so far, it's uh, the, ball's had, the ball's had eyes. Shin gets a swing and a miss there from... The shorts, or the excuse me, the catcher Ben Lee. Shin looks in and gets set for the pitch. Comes with it, and it's popped up down the first baseline. Caught for out number three, but. The Broncos do their damage in the first inning and have a 2 nothing lead as we head into the bottom of the first inning. It's tough for, uh, you know, the Gators not even able, they weren't even able to get any at-bats without having a deficit, but, you know, we've been knowing them to battle, so. Yeah, it's not the greatest start in the world for the Gators, but the good thing is Shin's getting a lot of, stingers off the end of the bat Broncos are putting the ball in play but these are these are at bats that could turn into outs as the game goes on yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, you know usually things regress to the mean and this great game of baseball and if you look up and down the Broncos lineup um, they, they do have three hitters uh, just above hitting just above 300 for average but you know as a team, um, their batting average isn't very great. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, you know that's that's the hottest inning they have. The thing that the Gators have going for them right now is they are an offensive team. So I would not be surprised if they came back with two runs themselves to tie this thing up. Yeah, contrarily, the uh, the Gators have six players in their lineup hitting over 300 and uh, two that aren't are hitting 282 and 295 so you know, it's a really really strong lineup here for the Gators yeah seven guys hitting over 300 and then the other two are above 280 is not something you see every day partner yeah no absolutely not and Sammy Gonzalez is in the on deck circle looking to time up the Broncos starting pitcher Caleb Reyes, whose uh, numbers you mentioned earlier, uh, pretty astounding. Now batting, the center fielder, number 10, Sammy Gonzalez. Center fielder Sammy Gonzalez is going to start it off for the Gators here. Yeah, the lefty looks in for the pitch and he slaps that one over the shortstop for a leadoff single. It only took the Gators one pitch to get a base runner here. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah, that's what you want to see from your leadoff hitter. I forget what I said about being patient against Caleb Reyes. I think the Gators have uh, another strategy in mind. Now Daniel Santos comes to the plate for the Gators. So 
second baseman's been real consistent for San Francisco State this year. He's played in 39 games, more than anyone else in today's starting lineup. And interesting, uh, interesting, you know, uh, Reyes comes set in an interesting way there. You see that crouch partner? I did. Can't think of somebody off the top of my head who, who that reminds me of, but I feel like there is, there is somebody. I just um, I can't think of them. And he delivers. It's that definitely unique. As Gonzalez is going to take off for second. That one's into the Down. outfield, and Gonzalez is headed to third. And he slides in safely. Gonzalez really providing a spark for the Gators here early. I'll tell you what, partner. Something's going to completely get overlooked on that play was that throw from Burns out there in center field was a cannon. That's something to keep an eye on while this game continues on. That's a very observant partner. Let's hope the Gators are also uh, cognizant of that. I'm sure they are. Reyes gets ready to deliver. That one's fouled off. Reyes comes set, looks at the runner at third, delivers. That one's in the dirt. Good patience shown here by Santos. The pitch. That one's lined into right field. And Gonzalez, no slide, but able to avoid the tag. Luke Watson had a great throw from right field there, but they just were not in time. Gonzalez's speed was too much for him. Again, though, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, only two batters now, but I think we've, we've already seen the uh, throwing capabilities of the Broncos outfielders. Exactly, partner. Now Nick Upstill comes to the plate. Highest batting average of a player on either team, batting 381. Really has been seeing the ball incredibly well this season. comes with the pitch. That one's fouled off by up still. That one's fouled off again by up still. He battles here with two strikes. Reyes is going to keep pounding that zone, so you got to be ready if you're up still. Fight everything off. And that one's blown by up still for the strikeout. Now batting the designated hitter, number two, Justin Clark. Justin Clark is coming up to bat here. He's the last Gators baseball player to win the Gator of the Week award. Three weeks ago, he had an amazing series against Cal State San Marcos. He takes that one low. As Clark waits for the pitch, watches that one, full count. I mean, excuse me, excuse me, even count, 1-1. One, one. And that one's fouled off. 
quickly 0-2 here to Clark. Now we're starting to see why Reyes has been so successful this year. He's doing a great job getting ahead of hitters. Well, it's uh, and one thing I think it's interesting is you know he he saves a lot of. And the score is 2 nothing right now. <laughs> the Broncos are ahead. Two-two two count here to Clark. Two two pitch. That one's hit high in the air. And the right fielder hauls it in for out number three. But the Gators are able to get one on the board and now it's two to one. I think there's something positive to take away on both sides of the ball there for the Gators and the Broncos. I mean, Reyes was pounding the zone, getting the head. But at the same time, the Gators were hopping on his pitches to start the game off. They were able to scratch a run across the board there, start this bottom half off, and now we go into the second inning. Yeah, I'll we'll see if uh, Shin can do more of the same that he did in the first thing and just have a, a little help from the baseball gods. Yeah, you know, something I was noticing about um, about Reyes when he was on the mound there, you know, he he, go, he goes from the stretch, even if there's nobody on base. So he saves a lot of motion in that sense. But then that, uh, that pre-wind-up crouch he does kind of, you know, takes away all that, uh, <laughs> the motion he saves. I feel like uh, the more pitches the Gators see, he's going to tire himself out doing all those crouches. The other interesting part about that little crouch he does is, as a runner, it could mess with you a little bit. could throw you off. You might be thinking he's going to the plate because it's such fast motion no, all at once, but no, all he is is just crouching down and coming set. Something that you got to stay safe about if you're the Gators. Yeah, you're right. Just the one pickoff attempt he did have, it was, uh, you know, you could tell the, the runner was a little thrown off. And here comes Shin with the first pitch of the inning. That one's taken low for a ball, one to no. Up at bat now in the eighth spot in the lineup for the Broncos is Nick Lugo, the senior shortstop, as he swings and misses at the second pitch. Now 0-2 count. Shin quickly with pitch number three. That one's chop foul. See if Shin can make quick work of Lugo here. He only has a 0 0.86 batting average on the season, so he hasn't had much success at the plate. That one's fouled off again. Still one and two. And ahead in the count, nothing new for Shin here to start this game. As he delivers, that one's hit hard on the ground and through the infield into right field for a single. And that'll boost Lugo's average. Gotta get that off speed down if you're Shin. Left it hanging in the zone there with the two strike count. It can't happen. And now the man in the nine hole for the Broncos, Luke Watson, the sophomore right fielder. You've already seen Watson's arm out there in right field. Let's see what he does here with the bat. Yeah. 
Shin looks at Lugo at first. And drills it in there for strike number one. Lugo has only got two stolen base attempts on the year, and he's been successful once. And he checks on him. Back safely. And the southpaw looks at the runner at first. And it's bunted. A lot of foul balls here from both teams to start. That one's blown by him. Watson sits down, strike number three. Second K of the day for Shin. Now batting, left fielder, number nine, Brent Coda. And the leadoff man, Brent Coda, the man who started for the Broncos in the first inning, comes up to bat again here. And aggressive early, swinging at that off speed in the dirt. I like first pitch off speed there from Shin. Yeah, I agree. I don't yeah. think that's something we saw the first time through the lineup, so you're giving them something different to look at. Yeah, that's got to be tough there for Coda, seeing that breaking ball, and then immediately Shin fires that one in there for strike number two. Coda quickly down 0-2 here. Shin delivers, and that one's in the dirt low. The runner on first takes off for second, and he'll be in there standing up. That's a tough one there. It looks like that one just got away from Sugden. Maybe came up just a little tad bit early, trying to block that ball. Shin stares down, and he fires that one in there. Strike three, looking Dakota. That's two outs here for the Gators in the inning, and strikeout number three on the day for Shin. See if he can strike out the side here. South Paul looks at the runner at second, and that one's a little low. Taken from Darius Price, the freshman designated hitter for the Broncos, batting in the two slot. Price grounded in the fielder's choice his first time up. Come on, Hank, keep working, bitch. That one's fouled that off. Yeah, and Price is one of three freshmen on the Broncos. A pretty young squad there. Gators have no freshmen in their starting lineup today. Means a bright future for the Broncos. Yeah, absolutely. And that's now quickly two strikes. What's awesome, too, is them as freshmen getting this playing time is just going to help out a lot when it comes down to their junior and senior years. Yeah, I guess you wonder if they'll end up, uh, they might end up, you know, hitting the transfer portal at some point. That one's hit hard on the ground to the second baseman, corralled, and got there for out number three. Great inning by Sh by Shin. Yeah, and a nice play there by Daniel Santos at second base. 
And finally, a, b- a ball hit by a shin on the ground that actually uh, went into the glove of a gator. Well, like we said, partner, he just needs to keep pounding the zone, letting them put the ball in play. His fielders will make plays, and they'll find those hits will eventually find gloves. First inning didn't really go his way, but that one sure did. He also had the two Ks. Great job getting his command in there as well. Yeah, and as we see uh, Reyes taking his warm-up pitches here, uh, I know we've been dissecting his uh, his windup and his del- and his delivery a little bit, but uh, to further that discussion, he really hides the ball on his windup. I think it's probably really hard to pick up for batters. You see, it's kind of tucked behind his waist there. It's got to be difficult for the batter. Now batting, the first baseman, number 20, Cody Godner. Yes, and batting fifth today, Cody Gardner, as he strolls up to the plate to the Star Wars theme music. Takes that one low. Good eye there by Gardner. And Gardner's the big power bat for the Gators, leading the team in home runs and RBIs. He's got five long balls and 30 runs batted in. As he waits here for the second pitch. That one's taken for a strike, 1-1 one, one count. Perez starting him off with an off-speed there. Comes back with a fastball right in the outside corner. It's a great job. And that one got in on the hands of Gardner a little bit. And he ran down the line hard and is able to beat that one out. The throw is in the dirt. He's safe at first base. Lead off man on again for the Gators for the second straight inning. Now batting the catcher, number nine, Matt Sugden. And the catcher, Matt Sugden, is coming up to the plate here. Gator sophomore. Gardner takes his lead off second and the pitch comes in low. And Sugden waits for the 1 0 pitch here from Reyes. Fired in for strike number two. Should see Reyes go straight to the plate for the most part here in this at-bat. Gardner has not attempted a stolen base all year. The announcer's jinx. Never has it been more prevalent and palpable. I don't even know what to say right now. (laughs) fouled up right above me and my partner and the first baseman comes over to corral that one great communication by Marco Malerbo right there take that from his catcher now if you're Ray is here. You're going to be looking for a ground ball with Heimovitz coming up to the plate. Checks on him again at first. Maybe Reyes knows something we don't know. Just trying to catch him sleeping over there, all it is. Yeah, maybe he's just trying to think about what pitch he wants to throw to Heimovitz here. Thank you. 
Reyes got him 0-2 here. A great job with his command. That one's hit hard on the ground. Oh, and a tough hop. That one hits the shortstop hard. He's down as Gardner rounds second into third safely. It'll be runners on the corners with one out here for the Gators, but uh, right now the concern is the Broncos shortstop as the training staff comes out to look at him. Yeah, it took a bad hop. Nick, Nick Lugo in the face there, it looks like. Yeah, that one was it was a um, straight line on the ground, and right before it hit his glove, it just popped. Yeah, it looked like a routine there double play ball at first. Yeah, there was no bouncing at all. It's just straight on the grass, and then right when it hit that uh, maybe the lip of the infield, it just jumped up on him. Training staff looks like they're looking into the dugout now. Just taking the precaution to make sure Lugo's all right before they let him stay in this game. It looks like he's gonna stay in the game. Yes, and he gets a well-deserved applause from the crowd for hanging through that one. Nobody. The right fielder, number eight, Michael Cunningham. And it's been a uh, feast or famine for Michael Cunningham coming to the back, coming to the plate here, the right fielder uh, for the Gators. He's got five home runs on the year, but he also leads the team with 30 strikeouts. So, hoping for some kind of contact here with runners on the corners. That one's low for ball one. Heimovitz is two for two on stolen base attempts this year. That one's hit hard between the shortstop and third baseman by Cunningham and brings home the Gators' second run. Great piece of hitting there by Cunningham. Hit that one on a line. Nobody. The shortstop, number one, Antonio Nanez. Now the man in the nine hole, Antonio Nanez, coming up for the Gators. See if he could uh, keep the party going here for San Francisco State. That one hit hard again to second base. To second and over the second baseman's head. And now things are starting, the ball starting to uh, fall the Gators' way here. Instead of a potential double play, they have the bases loaded. Seeing a pattern here. If you put the ball in play, good things are going to happen on both sides of the ball. We've seen that so far. Yeah, there's, a, there's the invisible gremlins in the infield today at the Swamp. Today. No doubt. No doubt. And just the man the Gators want coming up to the plate. The leadoff, Sammy Gonzalez. Braves is definitely having the type of inning that Shin had back in the first right now. Reyes delivers, that one's fouled off again. And you'd have to think with uh, Reyes' numbers coming into this one, this has got to be the uh, one of the most difficult starts to a game he's had so far this season. Good. 
And Gonzalez takes that one low. It's a 2-1 count here to Gonzalez. And he stays patient. Hitters count 3-1 here. You got Reyes where you want him now, 3-1. Got to be looking for something dead red down the middle if you're Gonzalez right here. Yeah, nowhere to put him. It's got to be in your spot if you're Gonzalez. And that one's fouled off. It wasn't that, that was a good pitch to hit there. You're still in the advantage, though, if you're Gonzalez with the bases loaded. Reyes delivers. Ooh. That one in there for strike three looking to Gonzalez. Reyes put all he had into that one. It's a huge out. Huge strikeout right there. And that's the second out of the inning. And Santos comes up with the bases juiced. Takes that one low. Santos had the liner to right field that scored Gonzalez back in the first inning. Line out, RBI, sack fly, I guess you could call it. Yeah, we'll see if we can see if we can get a few more runs batted in here. Fouls that one up. Reyes in the stretch. And the off speed is low. That's a great take. Great pitch, great take. 2-1 count now. And taken. 3-1 count. That was a good spot by Reyes, but even better take by Santos. Yeah, second straight 3-1 count with the bases loaded. We'll see if the Gators can capitalize here. Santos got to be looking dead red here. The pitch. In there for a strike. Full two count. outs. All the runners are going to be moving with 3-2 count here. Yeah, two outs, full count, bases loaded. Expect Heimovich to take a wide turn over there at third. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. It's a way to battle there from Santos. And Reyes comes again with the full count pitch. That's foul tipped into the catcher's mitt and held on to. Tough break for the Gators there. And the Broncos keep the damage minimal. It's a 2-2 game going into the third inning here. Gators tied it up. I mean, they could have got a lot more out of that with the top of the lineup with the bases loaded and one out, but at least you got that one run to scrape across right there and get this thing tied. New ball game for Shin here, top of the third. Yeah, and to build off what we discussed earlier, you know, with the Reyes' numbers at bare minimum, you know, I think the goal was to at least get him to work hard through the first couple of innings and get his pitch count up, which the Gators did a lot more than that. They were able to get a few runs on the board, so... And uh, Reyes has definitely thrown a lot of pitches. So, you know, I don't see him making it past, you know, the fifth inning, you know, barring some uh, 
really, really fast innings. No, Reyes has been strong so far. Shin's also been strong, though, so far. I think both pitchers have done a great job controlling themselves, getting ahead, and just letting batters put the ball in play. Just have had a few things just not go their way. Now batting, the center fielder, number eight, Naden Burns second. Nin Burns is going to lead it off here at the top of the third. Yeah, and again, this is a guy you want to keep off the base paths if you're San Francisco State. Burns walked his first at bat. He's going to take the 1-0 pitch from Shin here. And he fouls that one out of play. one count here as he takes that one for strike number two as Shin continues to get ahead of the Broncos batters in with the pitch and strike three swinging blows that one past him for out number one strikeout number four on the day for Shin love that start if you're Shin and the Gators Went right after the three batter. And that one's fouled out of play by Marco Malerba. Malerba got on base his first time. He's leading the Broncos and hits this season as he crushes that one into the outfield. It's high, it's deep, and it is caught at the wall by the Gators center fielder. Great catch by Sammy Gonzalez there on the warning track. Great catch, Sammy! No batting. The second baseman, number Great job finding that ball by Gonzalez. Using the warning track to his advantage and not hurting himself at the same time. And you see that one might have uh, might have given Shin some extra energy as he fires that one in there past him for strike number one. And strike number two. Shin working real quickly here. He's in control right now. The 0-2 from the southpaw incoming. Taken for strike number three. What an Strikeout inning from number five on the day for Shin. What an inning from Nathan Shin. Yeah, and as we go to the bottom of the third here, four hits apiece for both squads. A uh, difference on the box score is two errors for Cal Poly Pomona. The Gators have able to been able to have been clean here to the first couple of innings in the field. You know, as we said, it's really just been tough hops. Nothing, uh, no wrongdoing on their part. You know, what was so great about that top half of this third inning is Shin got them on the field and immediately off the field. Meaning, Caleb Reyes is gonna have to come back out with not a lot of rest. He's probably a little bit tired from that last inning, so if you're the Gators, you're gonna have to try to capitalize on this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Reyes was just on the mound for a long inning and you know he wasn't able to rest for more than a couple minutes before he's right back out on the bump again. Gators definitely have the momentum going with them right now. And with 3-4-5 coming up, you want to take advantage of it here. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Heart of the lineup, you know, this is this is the time to uh, do some damage here if you're San Francisco State.
That one taken for strike one. That's an 0 1 to Nick up still. The left fielder waits for pitch number two from Reyes. Here it comes. The off speed's fouled off out of play down the third baseline. Quickly down 0 2 here is up still. With a 381 average, it's safe to say that he will be battling. And he fouls that one off. Up still fighting here. I tried to strike out on back to back at bats. She struck out back in the first. And that one's fouled, tipped into the catcher's mid again. That's two in a row for the Gators. It's a great off-speed pitch there by Reyes. Now batting, the designated hitter, number two, Justin Hork. Yeah, and you know, usually lefties uh, like to see uh, righties on the mound, but you, you got to think with Reyes' delivery, it's got to be, you know, you, you don't see that ball coming in until the very last second. He's hiding it behind his, uh, behind his hip. And that one's hit hard into the outfield gap. Justin Clark stops at second. He crushed that one into the outfield, and he's in there safely now at second base. The first baseman, number 20, Cody Gardner. Burns, the center fielder for the Broncos, kind of wobbled it out there, but he's got a strong out arm out there. Fired it back in. Maybe saved Clark from going to third. Yeah, I think so, partner. And here's uh, Cody Gardner coming to the plate here, the first baseman for the Gators. Waits for the pitch, takes it in the dirt. Ball number one. Cody Gardner reached on an air in his first at bat. Or excuse me, it's been scored a hit. Infield single. He waits for the 1-0. Takes it again for a ball. 2-0 to Gardner. Good patience here to start the at bat. Like we harped on last half inning, you want to get as many pitches out of Reyes here. He takes that one for a strike, but as you said, nothing wrong with uh, another tally on the pitch count. 2-1 here to Gardner, still in, still in control. Fouled off out of play by Gardner. And evens up the count here at two and two. Gardner chops that one up the middle, corralled by the second baseman. And it's over the first baseman's head. And Clark comes in to score to give the Gators the lead, three to two. Gardner safe at first base. That's that was the almost the most identical bat to Gardner's last time as he chopped it up the middle. Second baseman made a play, and they had him throw him out, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, it's the third error in three innings for the Broncos. Not the way you want to start it defensively if you're Cal Poly Pomona. The catcher, Matt Sugden, takes strike number one looking, 0-1. Now batting the catcher, number nine, Matt Sugden. Gators sticking with the formula of just putting the ball in play and letting things happen for them. And 
Reyes has got to be a little out of his element here, giving up three runs here in the third inning already. So far in this game, Reyes' ERA is over 10. It's a far cry from his 1-3-2 ERA coming into this game. So that one's fired in there, but high for a ball. 2-2 two, two count. Fouled off by Sugden behind home plate out of play. Just have stayed fouling a lot of pitches off today. It's a good sign. It's just going to keep adding tallies to that pitch count for Reyes. Yep. Like body blows in a boxing match, partner. And Sugden waits for the pitch from Reyes. Comes from the stretch. In the dirt. Gardner stays put at first. Full count here to Sugden. Hit hard on the ground, through the gap, over second base. And Gardner advances to first base. Good piece of hitting there by Sugden. That's a phenomenal at bat by Matt Sugden. Worked the count to 3-2, fouled a couple pitches off, got what he wanted, took it straight back to where it came from. Base hit here. Extend this inning with one out. And that's the seventh hit for the Gators. Now runners on first and second with one out. And keeping Reyes on the hot seat. Heimovitz comes to the plate. He had that ball that was hit to Lugo at short. It came up and hit him in the face last time. So he's looking to bring in Gardner. Reyes delivers the 0-1. And swing and a miss there from Heimovitz. Down quickly in the hole, 0-2. And Heimovitz continues to battle down 0-2. He fouls that one off. Hard pitch to get a hold of there. Nearly in the dirt. And Reyes looks in at his catcher. Gets ready to deliver here. And with the pitch, that one's in on the hands of Heimovitz. He grounds it to the shortstop, and it's a double play for the Broncos. An inning killer for the Gators, but they do take the lead as it is 3-2 going into the top of the fourth year. It's another great inning for the Gators offensively. Just keep putting the ball in play. Good things are going to happen. Yeah, You're going to have to make the Broncos make some plays here, so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, scoring scoring one run in each of the first three innings is a great sign of consistency from San Francisco State. The Broncos have yet to be able to hold, hold them scoreless for an inning. And after, you know, Shin had some struggles in the first, uh, you know, he threw the ball extremely well, but, you know, still ended up giving up two runs. But it seems like he's really settled in here. Two straight scoreless innings, as you mentioned, partner. The last one was 
very economical. So see if you're going to have more of the same here. The great thing for Shin here is he's had a lot of rest over the past half an hour. He had that quick third inning, and he's been two long offensive innings for the Gators. So he's been sitting on the bench for a long time. He should be fresh and ready to go. Yeah, we'll go with that and not Rusty. But, you know, looking at it from a personal perspective, yes, you always want rest. There's nothing wrong with the rest. Yeah. You see, so usually you'd think that nothing, nothing bad can come of a little time on the bench to gather your thoughts and your strength. But, you know, as we've seen in baseball history, a lot of times, sometimes if a pitcher's on the bench for more than 30 minutes, they'll just take themselves out of the game. That one's drilled into the outfield, corralled by the left fielder and thrown in as the runner takes a turn but stays at first base. Looked like Tyler Chaffee was looking fastball there. He got it, drilled it into the left field for base hit to start the inning off. Yeah, great contact from Chaffee there. That one was on a line into the outfield. And this is the freshman Ben Lee catching today for the Broncos coming up to bat. Shin throws and check swing, but that one is fouled off. Lee popped out to uh, second base his last at bat. Yeah, I'll see if uh, Shin could uh, you know, induce some of the same type of contact yeah. here. Want to keep that runner on first. Pop up would be nice. O2 pitch taken for ball one. And Shin might, might have just been wasting a pitch there, seeing if he'd chase. Here's the one two. Ooh, and that one is. That one is lined hard towards the Gators' dugout, but seems like everyone is in one piece. Extremely late on that one was Lee. She stays alive here. And that one's hit hard into right field. Corralled by the Gators right fielder, Michael Cunningham, for out number two. Now batting the shortstop, number 22, Nick Lugo. Excuse me, that's out number one. This is Nick Lugo, the senior shortstop coming up to bat for the Broncos. Lugo singled his last time up to the plate. Yeah, and with a sub-100 batting average, you hope that uh, Shin's able to sit him down this time. The lefty looks over at the runner at first and fires it in there for strike. Lugo waits from the pitch from Shin. Buddy checks on the runner at first. Chaffee four for four in stolen bases this year. Slight threat on the base pass. It's 
He checks on him again. Apparently, Shin thinks he's more than a slight threat. Ooh, and that one hits his bat. Almost, almost hit him, but you know, Shin gets lucky there. Right in on the hands and uh, caught the handle of the bat there for Lugo. Yeah, you could definitely hear hitting the handle of the bat there. One two count. Here's the pitch. And that's taken for strike three, looking. Six K of the day for Shin. It's a great battle there for Shin. Gets that K there. Sets up. Yeah, it's the uh, number nine man coming up to bat, Luke Watson, for the Broncos. Shin sets and throws. That one's fouled off. And with uh, six strikeouts before the fourth inning's even complete, the Gators are on pace to have their uh, highest uh, strikeout total as a pitching staff. So far this season, uh, as a team, their highest their highest strikeout total for a game is 11. So they're uh, they're on pace to top that here today. Luke Watson struck out his last time up to the plate. We'll see if Shin can uh, repeat that here. A little high for a ball. This is a huge at bat because if you're Watson, you want to get Coda up yeah, with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, and the opposite if you're Shin. You want to get out of this inning here before seeing the top of the order. He blows that one by him, a swing and a miss. Shin one strike away from his seventh strikeout of the day. He stares in at his catcher. The one-two count. Runner on first. Fouled off. Watson battling. Shin gets ready for second time at the one two. And it's hit softly up in the air in left field underneath it is Nick Upstill for the third out of the inning. And that's three innings in a row. Uh, Shin has held the Broncos scoreless. He's really uh, settled in here to this game. Yeah, that's another great inning from Shin. Now they're gonna go into the bottom of the fourth to try to get to Reyes again. Yeah, see if they can add to this, uh, add to this one run lead and uh, yeah, you know, not maybe maybe they'll go the whole game without uh, going any scoreless innings. We'll see. I think a one run per inning average is uh, is the right prescription to success. I definitely think they would take that, considering how successful Reyes has been this year. here for the Gators. Now batting, right fielder, number eight, 
Michael Cunningham. Cunningham had a uh, RBI single his first time up at the plate. Here's the pitch. He takes the off speed for strike number one. And Reyes squats and gets ready for his windup. The delivery. Ball number one. Count even one and one. Reyes trying to get him to chase there with the 0-1 off-speed pitch. And that one taken again. Two and one. Good patience here by Cunningham. As we mentioned earlier, he leads the team in strikeouts, so that's a, a good sign to see this patience here. Th first three pitches, it lets him go by, waiting for the one he likes. And he did like that one, but got underneath it a little bit as it's hauled in right in front of the warning track by the Broncos center fielder, and then Burns the second. Yeah, Cunningham just missed that one. That one, if he was a little bit more on top of it, could have been possibly gone. Yeah, yeah, you said it, partner. He did just miss that one. And here's Gavin Heimovitz. He takes strike number one to start the at-bat. And, excuse me, that's Nanez at the plate. Corrected politely by my observant partner. Nanez reached on an infield single his first time up. And that one's high for a ball. Reyes put all of he got into that one with a big run at the end of it. Yeah, had him 0-2 there. He really, uh, really reared back for that one. And here's the one, two. And after a ball in the dirt, the count is even at two and two as Reyes gets ready to deliver again. Here's the pitch. Taken high, full count. It's a way to battle by Nanez. That one hit hard on the ground at the shortstop. Makes a play, and that's out at first base. No out number two Gonzalez. for the Gators. Sammy Gonzalez. Sammy Gonzalez, the leadoff man, comes on and resets the lineup for the third time today here. And uh, you know it's a good sign for the Gators' offense when uh, – the leadoff man's getting his third at bat only in the fourth inning. He bunts that one, but a little hard to the pitcher. Easy play to make for out number three. I actually don't hate that idea from Gonzalez right there. Nobody's expecting it. Lay it down, use your speed to get on. It's just a little bit too up the middle towards the pitcher there. Yeah, yeah. Even if he could have just gotten it a little softer. So, so that maybe the pitcher and the catcher, you know, had to had, had the little one. hesitation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we go to the top of the fifth now. Shin will come back out. He's been shoving for the last four innings. Yeah, and that was uh, the first inning. The Gators weren't able to score. He is going to be facing two, three, four here to start this top of the fifth off, though. He's got a tough challenge up ahead for him. It's 
the scores still say or still stays, excuse me, three to two, the Gators on top. Broncos with five hits, Gators with seven. Broncos have three errors on the day with the Gators zero. Yeah, we'll see if Shin can make it uh, four innings in a row here, scoreless for the Broncos. Now batting, the left fielder, number nine, Brent Hoda. And here's the leadoff man, Brent Coda for the Broncos. Aggressive swinging at the first pitch, but it's fouled off, out of play. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Well, it's taken, it's called a, called a ball by the umpire. Not sure where that one was. It's a great spot from Shin right there. Want to live there. <laughs> one one count here, Dakota. Shin with the pitch. Taken, looked like just in the exact same spot, but that one called a strike. One and two. Exactly why I said you want to live there. He's eventually going to get those calls. <laughs> the one two. Off speed in the dirt. Evens the count at two and two. Right idea right there. See if you could get him to chase. Here's the pitch. And that one hit hard. And it's corralled by the right fielder, but not before Coda is in there safe at first base with a single. It's a great piece of uh, two-strike hitting right no, there. The designated hitter, number four, Like Yeah, that's what, that's what you expect from your leadoff, man, if you're Cal Poly Pomona. The Gators are trying to avoid it, but not able to there. Just didn't toot too much with the swing and just took it opposite field. and checking him there. Coda does have six attempts from stolen bases this year. He's been successful five times. He comes with the pitch, swung on and missed by Darius Price. Price has a fielder's choice and a ground out on the day. The 0 1. Off speed in there for a strike. It's a great 0 1 pitch from Shin right there. Yeah, confidence in his stuff. 100%. He's got the freshman designated hitter for Cal Poly Pomona. Quickly down 0 2 in the count. He checks on the runner at first. What do you think after uh, the fastball off-speed sequence? What do you think he comes with here with the 0-2? let going to say with the uh, off-speed here in the dirt. Looks like that's where the catcher's setting up, but checks on him again at first. But the other thing you have to think about is you have Lugo over there on first. If you do throw him something in the dirt, he's probably more than likely going to take off. I mean, excuse me, Coda over there at first. Yeah, he, he, he uh, leaves that one outside. One and two count. Definitely wasn't expecting anything in the zone there. Here's the pitch. And it swung on and missed. That's strikeout number seven for Shin on the day. 
as he continues to pile up no the case. The center fielder, number eight, Nin Burns II. Huge out, huge out for Shin there. Now it does set up for a double play, but you do have Burns coming up to play, who is the speedster. Yeah, Nin Burns the second, probably the hardest guy in the Broncos lineup to double up. But see if see if you could get one, get a liner out to the first baseman, perhaps. Shin starts him off with a swing and a miss for 0-1. Burns struck out his last at bat and walked in the first inning. And he lunges at that one, swinging a miss. Burns is not seeing the ball well out of Shin's hand right now. Yeah, he's quickly down in the count. Let's see if Shin can take advantage of another 0 2 count for him. That one's high. One, two. Ready, defense. The southpaw looks at the runner at first. Here it comes. That one outside. Evens the count at two and two. That one's taken for a ball. Right on the paint there. It's chest high there. It's a close call. Could have gone either way. Yeah, and he goes from, uh, Burns goes from down 0-2 to a full count. He's battling well. See what Shin does here. He gets him to pop up. It's in foul territory, but it's out of play. It looked like Cotto was moving on that pitch. Yeah, uh, full count, two outs. And then Cotto will probably be uh, taken off here again. And Burns keeps battling. He fouls that one off out of play as well. Here comes the full count pitch, and it's high. Burns really battled there, ends up drawing the walk. Not Eight. only does he give up the the walk there, that's a huge at bat in terms of pitch count. Yeah, Burns was, was fighting off for a lot right there. And a meeting at the mound here for the Gators. Doesn't look like Shin's going to be coming out of the game. The Gators pitching coach trying to calm Shin down here. Give him some words of wisdom to get out of this inning here. Keep the Gators with a one run lead. Yeah, it's definitely just a little pep talk. Give him a little breather. And that's ball number one, one out count. Two runners on here for the Broncos. One out in the inning. 
a force in second base, see if Shin could get one on the ground, turn a double play, and get out of this inning with his fourth scoreless frame in a row. Marco Malerba up now. He's singled back in the first. Yeah, and Malerba leads the Broncos in hits, doubles, and RBI. So tough guy to see at the plate here if you're Shin. That's showing me that he's good with runs in scoring position. It's going to be a tough battle for Shin here. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. That's two strikes. You got him right where you want him here if you're Shin. Got to execute your pitches. The one, two. That one's in the dirt. No, 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 Matt, no, no. Temporarily gets away from the catcher, Matt Sugden, but the runner stays put at second base. Oh, Not Go. far enough away to uh, venture off towards third there. Count even at two and two, and it's fouled off again. Malerba battling here. The lefty leans over, looking for the call. Gets set, comes with the pitch. It's fouled off again. Broncos really, really battling here. I think Shin's probably getting a little frustrated. The pinch, pitch count's rising quickly here. And the Broncos' first baseman swings and misses. That's strikeout number six. Eight on the day for Nathan Shin. No batting. The second baseman, number 14, Cedric Perez. It's a huge K for Shin there. Now brings up Cedric Perez, who's 0 for 2 with two Ks himself today. That's two outs. Runners on first and second. Pitch number one taken for a ball. Here's the 1-0. That one's fouled off. Count straightens at one and one. Cedric Perez waits for the pitch. And the second baseman takes it for a strike. And that's one and two. You know, I'd be really interested to see, partner, how many two-strike counts that uh, Shin has had on the total of batters he's faced today. You feel like he's, been, he's gotten two strikes on every batter. It's definitely over half. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Let's see if he can finish it off here. That one's in the dirt. Good idea by Shin. See if he can get him to chase, but he's able to lay off it. I'd like to see Shin just go right at him here. No messing around. I've already fallen behind with some other guys trying to do that. Yeah, and uh, Perez leads the Broncos and walks, so you really just got to go right at him here if you're Shin. And he does, but that one is called a strike. From our angle, uh, it was definitely not too high or too low, so it uh, must have been a little inside or outside, according to the umpire. That's a full count now. And like we said, Shin's now in another 3-2 count. Go, 
And the left-hander bears down and delivers. It's fouled off. Hit the catcher's mitt, but Sugden wasn't able to hold on for uh, third out. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite San Francisco State. A tough play to make as a catcher, though. Broncos are getting a lot out of shin this inning. Even if you don't score a run here, scrape one across. This is a good, hard-fought inning from the Broncos. Shin comes with the full count pitch again, and he strikes him out. And he pumps his fist into his mitt and lets out a scream. He gets his ninth strikeout of the day. Really an incredible performance through five innings from Nathan Shin as his teammates and his coaches give him some words of encouragement as he heads back to the dugout. It's an amazing job for Nathan Shin. Like I said though, I would like to see him go right at batters when he gets ahead in the count from now on. Yeah, I think, you know, that's probably something his pitching coach is going to talk to him about right now because if he wants to go deeper into this game, he uh, he's not going to be able to be too cute around the uh, battling around the corners of the plate. It's been a solid battle so far, though, between the two starting pitchers. Yeah, Great. we're halfway through this game now as we head into the bottom of the fifth, and yeah, the... It's been a, as we thought in the beginning, you know, only a half game separates these teams, and it's uh, it's been illustrated on the field so far. A really closely battled game. Daniel Santos is going to lead it off here for the Gators in the bottom of the fifth. Had an RBI sack fly in the first. Struck out his last at bat. And what do you think, partner? Do you think this will be Reyes' last inning? There, it seems there's already uh, action there in the Broncos' bullpen as they got somebody warming up. I think it's something definitely to monitor, also considering who gets on base. Reyes starts Santos off with a strike on a foul ball. The 0 1 to Santos. That's taken for, or that's a strike for an 0 2 count. Santos in the hole, see if he can protect the plate here. And he crushes that one into the outfield. It's down between the right fielder and center fielder in the gap. He's in there standing up with a double at second base. Great piece of hitting by Daniel Santos. Not deterred by being down 0-2 in the hole. That is a great piece of hitting by Santos. and He's done that twice now today. Just waited for his pitch was patient with it, let it get deep in the zone and taken it in the right, right center field. Yeah, and there's a reason he has a 314 batting average so far this year. Here's Nick Upstill. He fouls that off-speed pitch off. It's 0-1. Up still struggled so far today at the plate. Looking to get himself going here in the bottom of the fifth. That's not a good sign. They call for a bunt. It's fouled off. Now he's down 0-2. Here SF State calling for them to Tell him to do his job. They want him to get Santos over to third base. Takes that one high for a ball. And Reyes.
Reyes comes with the pitch. Up still got under that one a little bit. I don't think it's deep enough for the runner to tag. Hauled in by the left fielder. And Santos stays put at second base. That's a frustrating at bat if you're Nick up still. You really want to make sure you get that runner over in the scoring position on third. Make it a lot easier on Justin Clark. Yeah, and Upstill is now 0 for 3 on the game. And uh, coming into today, he actually leads the Gators with multi-hit games, having 18 so far on the season. So out of character for Upstill. Clark takes that one for a ball. That's a great take by Justin Clark. Doesn't want to flare at it there so he doesn't swing at all. Yeah, he gets rewarded for it. Yeah, count even at one and one here. Reyes chucks it in. It's fouled off and out of play. Now it's 1-2 here if you're Clark. You gotta fight it off here. If you're the Gators, you really want to score Santos in this inning. Here's the pitch. Oh, ooh, and that one hits him hard. He takes first base as he tries to shake it off. Jogging down the first baseline. And now he stops his jog down the first baseline. That one looks like it's number stung. Nine. The first baseman, number 20, Cody Gardner. Yeah, that one got away from Reyes there. Clark will take his bag at first. We'll bring up Cody Gardner. Now you got first and second for the Gators. And you wonder if this will be it here for Reyes. Yeah, it looks like the Broncos going to have a mound visit. <laughs> no, just a, uh, just a mound visit. He's staying out there for now. You do have the double play ball set up now if you are Reyes with Gardner up. He's hit two up the middle so far today, so he does something similar to it. Could be able to get out of this inning. And Gardner takes a big hack at that one, but swing and a miss for strike number one. One out here for the Gators. Reyes looks in for the sign. A one pitch incoming to Gardner. And he hits that one hard down the first baseline foul out of play. The 0-2 pitch to Gardner. He swings and misses. Strike number three. Huge strike out there for Reyes. Yeah, it's a big, big at bat there. And now you're one out away from getting out, out of a leadoff double from Daniel Santos. Yeah, 
And the man behind the dish for the Gators, Matt Sugden, steps into the box here. Trying to keep the ball rolling for the Gators here. Let's that one go for a ball. Sugden singled his last at bat. Uh, Gators could use one of those here. Ooh, he hits that one hard. Left fielder going back, and it's over his head, gone. Home run for Matt Sugden. Gives the Gators a four run lead as he trots around the bases. Huge, huge moment at the plate for Matt Sugden. Matt Sugden with his fourth homer of the season. That was a huge at bat for the Gators. Not only did Matt Sugden just pick up the three, four, five hitters, but he just picked up the whole team and just gave them a four run lead now. Yeah, that's it's uh, you can't overstate how big of an at bat that was from Sugden. And that one's foul. And falls safely to the ground. Yeah, Sugden's seen the ball really well today. His last at bat, waited for a fastball, got it, and took it right back up the middle for a single. This one does the same thing, drives it out to left field, just completely turns on it, uses his hips, gives the Gators a four run lead. Time of it takes a ball in the dirt there. One one count now. Time of it's reached on air his last at bat. And Heimovitz hits that one in a line into the outfield. It falls in. He's in there safe with a single. And it looks like things might be coming to an end for Reyes here. He's, he's, he's starting to get pretty. He's starting to get hit pretty hard for the by the Gators. That's double digits and hits now for the Gators with ten on the day. And that's in the dirt. Ball number one. I think the hope for the Broncos is for Reyes to s finish this inning out. But to what extent though? Cunningham waits, fouls it off. Cunningham had a uh, RBI single his first time up to the plate. He takes that one for a strike. One, two count. Reyes gets ready with the pitch and it's low. Count even to Cunningham. And you know Reyes doesn't want to go 3-2 here, so Cunningham should be looking for something to hit. But it's low, full count. Great job by Cunningham to hold up there. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. Right in the direction of me and my partner. But falls harmlessly into the parking lot. I think one thing's for sure, and Reyes' day is probably done after this batter. 
Yeah, another uh, long at bat here. A couple foul balls hit with a full count from Cunningham. This is going to be the eighth pitch of the at bat coming up here. On oh, Reyes overthrows that one way high. Visibly frustrated on the mound. But it looks like the coaching staff is leaving him in there to try to finish this fifth inning off. It's an interesting strategy here from the uh, Cal Poly Pomona coaching staff. At this point, Broncos down four runs. They're not uh, keeping him in there to make sure he can get the win. Interesting line of uh, reasoning here. Might have something to do with the trust in the bullpen. That one's hit hard, but gathered off the dirt on a line by the Broncos' second baseman. Good contact by Nanez, but the lead stays at four for the Gators as they head to the top of the six with a 6-2 to two to lead. And Nathan Shin walks out to the mound looking for his fifth consecutive scoreless inning. Shin can pick, pitch comfortably here now. now has a uh, four run lead here so if you're Shin you got to be thinking just give these guys something in the strike zone let them put it in play let your defense do all the work And the Gators' defense has still been um, really solid today with no errors. And, uh, yeah, Shin with 9Ks on the day. We touched on it earlier. He's uh, approaching the Gators' team strikeout total, a single-game team strikeout total by himself here. And we're only in the sixth inning. Tyler Chafee comes to the plate for the Broncos. He's two for two on the day with two singles. And it's 1-1 one, one here. Tyler Chaffee is in the box here. Shin one strike away from strikeout number 10, and that one was really close. It was taken by Chaffee. Count even at two and two. And that one's hit hard by Chaffee into right field. And not able to get hauled in by the right field there. He slides into second base safely. Great piece of two strike hitting there by Chaffee. No batting the catcher. No yeah, he just, uh, you know, he let the pitch uh, do the work for him. He just you know, took that one, took that one into the opposite field. Didn't try to do too much with it. Ben Lee takes that one for a strike. Ben Lee is 0 for 2 on the day with two pop outs. His chin tries to work out of this jam he's gotten himself into here. The top of the sixth. 0 oh, 1 from Shin. That one's hit hard into center field. 
caught by Sammy Gonzalez. The runner tagging from second base slides into third safely. No batting. The shortstop, number 22, Nick Lugo. Important thing there is Chin got the out. One down now here. The top of the sixth. Chafee advances to third on the line out from Lee. Shortstop hits that one hard into the outfield. And that's going to be run number three for the Broncos. Crossing home plate. But Cunningham keeps the runner at first. Corrals that one well in the outfield. Lugo now with his second hit on the day. An RBI single there to score Chafee. Now the Broncos have cut the lead to three. Shin with the pitch. Bunted foul. Luke Watson now comes to the plate. Over two on the day with a K and a fly out. No one pitch from the southpaw, but checks on the runner at first. Luke Watson in the box, the righty, waiting from the pitch from the lefty, and bunted foul again. And swung on and miss. Strikeout number 10 for Shin. Double digits. And that's out number two in the inning for the Gators. And Shin had his scoreless inning streak snapped here in this frame, but he's got to be really uh, pleased with getting his 10th strikeout there. He's still got great pickup on his pitches right now. That last pitch had some nice velocity on it. Lead off man, Brent Coda back in the box, down 0-1. Coda's two for three today with two singles. And swings and misses at that one in the dirt. Another 0-2 count. Shin's very accustomed to those, it seems, today. Oh, and he picks him oh, off. Great pickoff move to first base. And he is out at second. Great, great pickoff move by Shin. He's really helping his own cause here today. Yeah, Shin got Lugo lacking over there with that lefty pickoff. With the yeah, 10 strikeouts and one pickoff. That's, you know, oh, yeah. 11 of the 18 outs that the Gators have recorded have been just uh, Shin alone. So he's, he's really making a huge impact today. No, on the he's, ball. he's been impressive today. Number 28, 
Dylan Escobar is going to take the mound now for the Broncos. Escobar, a freshman from Rancho Cucamonga, went to South Hills High School. Another lefty coming into the game now. Rancho Cucamonga, eh? So it's a it's a workaholic on the mound. Then. Oh yeah. Escobar is getting brought in for some damage control. Gonzalez. He's going to have to control this top of the Gators lineup with Gonzalez, Santos, and Upstill to start it off. Yeah, new look here from the, for the Gators. The lefty takes the mound. He fires that one in for a strike. And with the wind up. Ball one. Count even one and one. That one fouled off. Gonzalez has a single back in the first today. And Escobar tries with the off speed there, trying to get him to swing and miss with two strikes. But nothing doing with the patient Sammy Gonzalez at the plate. And he takes that one again for a ball. Full count here to Gonzalez. Here's the pitch. It's fouled up. And will it get out of play? It will. As Gonzalez battles with a full count. That one fouled off. Escoval try to blow him away there. Gonzalez doing a great job fighting it off. See you another day. And he draws the walk there. No batting. The second baseman, number 26, Daniel Santos. And Escobar checks on the runner at first, but Gonzalez back safely. <laughs> Santos stepping into the box, having a good day today at the plate. Let's see if he continue that, can continue that here. Let's it go for a strike.
Escobar comes set. And the ball is in the dirt on a bunt attempt, and Gonzalez moves up easily into second, standing up. It's a great read by Gonzalez there to see that ball down, see it going in the dirt and take off immediately. Yeah, and you never know, but maybe uh, Santos uh, Santos uh, drawing the bunt there early and might have uh, thrown off Escobar a little bit on the mound. And that one's bunted very hard. But the Broncos make easy work of it, although Santos does his job. He moves the runner to third base. Only one out in the inning now. Yeah, I don't think anyone really cares as long as the runner got to third base. Santos did his job there. It was bunted a little bit too uh, hard, like you said, partner. But Gonzalez is still on third base right now. Now we get to see if Nick Up still can come out of his mini slump he's got here today. Up still is now in a 2 0 count. Here's the pitch. And taken low by Up still. Ooh, that one looked like it was below the knees, but called a strike by the umpire. One out, and swung on and missed by Upstill. Full count here. You're up still. You want to put something in play here to get that run in. And he takes that one, but it's down the middle for strike three. Off speed had him fooled there. Nobody. The designated hitter, number two, Justin Clark. Justin Clark steps into the batter's box here, and he takes that one for strike, er, yeah, for strike one. Clark trying to pick up his teammate here. Now he finds himself down 0-2. for the pitch and it's in the dirt good stop there by the Broncos catcher to keep that run from uh, from scoring there for the Gators Escobar delivers fouled off One two count. Thank you. 
hit on the ground by the Gators, and he's out at first base. That's the end of the sixth inning. Gators not able to bring home that run on third base, but they still take a three-run lead into the seventh inning. And we'll see who's coming on to the mound here for the Broncos. Don't expect it to be Reyes. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty brutal inning for the Gators. Yeah, that was a that was a brutal inning for the Gators for sure. I mean, to get Sammy Gonzalez on to lead it off and then get nothing, that's got to sting. Yeah, luckily they have enough of a cushion right now to where it's uh, not too dire, but that could change very quickly. Yeah, but if you're Shin, you, you probably want that insurance run back that you gave up last inning. So that was a tough one. Yeah. But yeah. like you said, they're still up three. Shin's been cruising. Yeah, no, you're right, partner. We know how pitchers think. They, uh, nothing's ever good enough. So I think that your, uh, your description's accurate, I would say. Well, you know, back in my day, I was a pitcher. So I know exactly how it feels. You want your team to pick you up. You want your team to get you a big cushion of runs so you could just go out there and just pound the zone. Let the other team put the ball in play. And yeah, when you say back in your day, partner, you know, did you guys have gloves back then? Did you guys play? Did you guys play with uh, the broomsticks? Yeah, how'd you know, actually? Yeah, just you know, I was I was picking up what you're putting down. Ooh, and that went up and in to the Broncos hitter. And uh, that was a lefty up there against Shin and uh, grazed off, seemed to be his shoulder there. Yeah, that was Brent Coda there. Not the start you want if you're Shin. Darius Price now comes up, struck out his last at bat. You're Shin here, you're looking to roll up a double play ball. That one's taken by Price for a strike. After a, hits ba after a hit batsman, it's a good way to battle back by uh, Shin and forget about it. Here's the 0-1 from Shin, incoming. But that one's down in the dirt. 1-1 one, one count. Swing and a miss. One and two. Shin one strike away from tying the Gators single season or uh, excuse me single game strikeout total on the year. He delivers and that one's in there and he does it. Wow. Shin ties the Gators single game strikeout total by himself with 11 here. That was an amazing spot by Shin right there. And Burns is going to come up now. Two walks and a K for him at the plate today. Yeah, and then Burns the second uh, big hack on that one. Like we said, his last at bat, he's... He's having trouble picking up the ball out of Shin's hand. He's had very few contact on his swings today. And 
He does make good contact there, a little bit underneath it. And it's caught by the Gators outfield there as the runner stays put at first base. Two down in the inning now for Shin. That's a big out. Go right at the number three number batter and Burns. The first baseman, now you got to go right at the number three Malerba. batter and Malerba, who has a single earlier in the game, struck out his last at bat. And you wonder here if uh, Brent Coda might be looking to steal one here. Get in scoring position with uh, Malerba up at the plate. Leading RBI getter for the Broncos. Yeah, down to their final seven outs. Nothing to lose here for the Broncos trying to uh, steal a bag. Two one count here. Marco Malerba waits for the pitch. He fouls that one off behind home. Ooh, and it's just out of play. O2 count here to Malerba. Could it be strikeout number 12 for Shin? He delivers. And hit softly, caught by the second baseman on the line. Nathan Shin, it's been magnificent for seven innings so far today. Yeah, given the, given the Gators bullpen a break, uh, quality start by definition. And uh, yeah, just a great game overall on the bump. Now we talked about today, at the beginning of the game, you wanna see Shin go deep into this game with three more left on the weekend. It's gonna be a long weekend of pitching, so to get seven strong innings out of him today, that's huge for the Gators. Yeah, that is huge. As during the seventh inning stretch here, the crowd uh, <laughs> keeping up with baseball tradition, singing, take me out to the ball game. However, and it's not uh, juxtaposed well with the Drake playing from the speakers. Dylan Escoval has taken the mound once again for the Broncos here. The bottom of the seventh, she tries to hold the Gators to six runs, give his team a chance to get back into it. Cody Gardner is going to lead it off here for the Gators in the bottom of the seventh. Gardner has reached Gardner. base twice with two infield single, well, excuse me, one infield single, and then reached on an error the next inning. Escoval starts him off with a strike one. 6-3 lead for the Gators here in the bottom of the seventh. Looking to add to it, the delivery. Gardner fouls it off, 0-2. Cody Gardner in the box now. And takes a takes a rough swing at that one and he goes down swinging for a strikeout out number one in the inning Kyle Banning, the catcher number nine Matt Sugden
Sugden takes that one for a strike. Ball there to Sug Sugden. Sugden had the three run home run his last time up. Complete shot to left field. He'll take the walk here. Now batting, third baseman, number seven, Gavin Hayes. Gavin Heimovitz steps into the box here against Escobar. Brings the pitch. Ball number one. Sugden takes his lead off first. Escobar with the pitch. Now went in there for a strike. One and one count. That one taken for a ball. Two and one count. Gators trying to add to their three-run lead here in the bottom of the seventh. That one fouled off, out of play behind home plate by Heimovitz. Sugden was on the move there. Yeah, don't, don't ever say that catchers don't have wheels. As a, as a catcher myself. take these things very seriously as that one's hit high into the outfield and corralled by the center fielder. Come on, Mike. Come on, Schmieder. That's two outs now here in the inning for the Gators. No matter. The right fielder, number eight, Michael Cunningham. Come on, Mikey. Let's go, Eddie. Let's go, Schmieder. Go, Ed. Let's go, Ed. That pitch was uh, a little low, but called a strike by the umpire. And that one... Uh, well short of home plate. Bounced a few, free, uh, few feet in front of the batter there. And Sugden moves up to second base as it gets by the catcher. A runner in scoring position here now for San Francisco State. Yeah, Cunningham has a, another runner in scoring position. He had an RBI single back in the first inning. Or in his first at bat, excuse me. He fouls that one off. Escobar looks at the runner at second and strikes him out looking. Broncos head back to the dugout down three and the Gators are gonna look to keep things where they are.
attention please. Now on the mound for the Gators, number 29, Andrew Silva. Silva will come in and face the five, six, seven hitters for the Broncos. Silva from Pittsburgh, California. De La Salle guy. got a 2.96 ERA on the year with two wins and a loss and 16 appearances. 24 innings pitch, giving up 24 hits, eight earned runs, three walks, 15 strikeouts for Andrew Silva on the year. So he's gonna start off this top of the eighth against Cedric Perez. So that one is in there for a strike to Perez. Oh, one. Silva with the pitch. Strike number two. It's a good way to start it by Silva. the exact control you want to start it off. Ooh, and that one, that one looked good, but umpire not giving it to him. It comes with the pitch. Ooh, again the umpire doesn't give it to him. Those are back-to-back -back great pitches by Andrew Silva. And honestly, these first four pitches, he sent a message to the Broncos that he's going to be up in, in the zone. And he stays there again. Good scoop there by the shortstop. Great play gets him at first base. Tough short hop for the shortstop to deal with there. But... Able to, able to uh, make it look like a re routine play there. No batting. The third baseman, number 34, Tyler Shea. A nice scoop by Nanez. Yeah, that was a great play by Nanez right there. Got it right on the bounce. Made a great throw to first base to Gardner. Get the first out and really help Silva out there. Tyler Chaffee now comes up to the plate. He's leader. got two hits on the day. Yeah, he's the leader in home runs for uh, Cal Poly Pomona, too. And he drills that one off the mound into center field safely at first with a single. Three hit day for Tyler Chaffee now. Number 33, Ben Lee. He'll bring up Ben Lee. He's 0 for 3 with two pop outs and a line out. Lee takes that one for a strike. Lee's came in and done a great job with his control so far. Those are six great pitches right in the zone. Excuse me, Silva. And here he comes with the second pitch. Silva looks in for the sign, he gathers himself in the stretch with the pitch, and a little low and outside for a ball. Still a great spot, you want to live there. A 
Lee waits for the one two from Silva. Here it comes. It's chopped in the infield. Got by the shortstop. He tags second, throws over to first, and a double play for the Gators. Exactly what the doctor ordered. We could just call that the Antonio Nanez ending. That, that was indeed the Antonio Nanez inning. Two great plays. Bats ninth in the Gators lineup, but possibly first in the field. Andrew Silva came in and killed it, though. I mean, he was all over right in the zone, but he was hitting the spots. It's exactly what you want to see from a reliever. Yeah, and, you know, I'll, I'll stay here and uh, talk to the viewers forever. I love my baseball, but on a cold night, you don't mind a quick inning. Not at all, partner. Escoval is going to stay in for the Broncos, which seems like a solid move considering there's going to be three more games this weekend. They're going to need as many arms as they could possibly need, or have, excuse me. And he's been great so far. Holding the Gators to nothing. Two innings pitch. Nez will lead it off. We just saw him with the glove this past half inning. Let's see if he could lead it off here with the bat. That one fouled off out of play. Nez line went out to the second baseman, his last at bat. That one's taken for a ball. 1-1 one, one count. The pitch. Lined into the outfield for a single. And Nanez continues his productivity, this time on the offensive side. Great at bat by Nanez. He's had two back to back great at bats now. The leadoff man, Gonzalez, back in the dish again for the Gators, and that's a tough break. He makes great contact, but it's caught by the first baseman, and Nanez is doubled off at first base. Quick two outs for the Gators as Gonzalez walks back to the dugout with a wry smile. Yeah, there's not really much you could do about that one, partner. Baseman, number 26, Even Daniel if Nanez Santos. froze on that one, he was still out. It was yep. on right next to the bag. Yes, it, uh, no better, no better placement for a pitcher in that mm. scenario. Not at all. It's catch and step, double play, just like that. Daniel Santos steps up to the plate, takes ball one. Yeah, and that's back to back double play is uh, expediting the end of this game here. Strike number one to Daniel Santos. Count now even at one and one. Santos had a double to the wall earlier today. To go along with a uh, RBI sack fly in the first inning as well. So he's hit the ball pretty well today so far. That one's taken for a strike by Santos. And worth mentioning, a quick note on Sugden. With that home run he hit today, he now leads the Gators reaching base safely in 19 straight games. As Escobar comes with the pitch, and that one's low for a ball. Yeah. 
and a half-hearted swing at a ball in the dirt by Santos, and he is thrown out at first. Well, the Gators head to the top of the ninth inning with a three-run lead. See if they can finish it off here. Three more outs needed to go home with a victory. And it's been four games, as we mentioned in the beginning. You know, Gators have gone a long time. It's been over a year since beating Cal Poly Pomona. So this would be a big win for the Gators here and start the series off in the right direction. And Andrew Silva is going to come back out, finish it off for the Gators. Save opportunities. They're up by three. He has three saves on the season already. Looking for his fourth. If he can come in and have that same control he had last inning, I expect the Gators to get up out of here pretty quick. Yeah, Nick Lugo is going to be leading it off here for the Broncos. Not a bad part of the lineup here for the Gators. Uh, the Broncos have their eight, nine, and one hitters coming up, which is uh, not one of the most uh, intimidating no, parts of the lineup. Number 22, Nick Lugo. Lugo does have two hits today, though, with an RBI. As Silva looks to go right at him. Start this top of the ninth here on this Friday glooming evening here in San Francisco. Silva starts him off with a ball. Yeah, presently here at the Swamp, we see the mist rolling in from first base and over the parking garage. Well, the more more the fog, I should say, not the mist. If if we're being uh, if we're being, you know, meteorologist approved. Swing and a miss there for Lugo. Two two count. And he sits him down. Strikeout number 12 for the Gators. That is now the record uh, after uh, Shin tied the record by himself. That's now uh, the first time the Gators have gotten 12 strikeouts this year as a team pitching. That was a great job by Silva. He fell, fell down in the count, came back with three straight great pitches. Strikeout Lugo there. Yeah, just two, just two more outs needed for the Gators here to wrap things up. Trent McKinney is now the pinch hitter here for the Broncos. He will hit for Luke Watson, the right fielder. Silva doing a great job staying in that zone. That one crushed. It looks like it's going to get out of here. And it does. It clears the fence. As the man in the nine hole, Luke Watson, rounds the bases. That's his first home run of the year. Excuse me. That's a pinch hitter. Trent McKinney with the home run. Really, uh, really impressive there to come in cold off the bench on a, on a chilly day like today and be able to plop one over on the other side of the fence there. The good news is if you're San Francisco State, you're still up two. Nobody on. Brent Coda does come to plate though. Two hits today. 
And then the Gators' lead is shrunk into two. A little less comfortable here. One one count. A swing and a miss. Strike number two. Here's the pitch. And gets underneath it. Caught easily by Sammy Gonzalez in the outfield for out number two. Broncos down to their final out here. Now batting the designated hitter, number four, Darius Price. All right, Andrew, one more. Let's do it. Now finish it, Andrew. Go, Gators, one more. Go, Gators, one more. Go, Gators, Darius Price comes to the plate now. Here's the pitch from Silva. Line to third base, and that one just foul. Hard hit, but a little early there from Price. Price has an 0-4 today. Hasn't been able to get on base yet. Yeah, never, uh, never something to be proud about if you're a designated hitter what you're in the lineup for. Here's the pitch from Silva. Takes that one low. Here's the pitch. And call the ball by the umpire. It's a great spot by Silva though. Silva's done a great job staying in his zone, keeping the ball low, letting them put it in play. And Except that there. one, a little sweet chin music by Silva. Now we're gonna see Silva come out of the stretch here. No batting, the center fielder number eight. See, it gets interesting as the th three hitter now. Burns comes to the plate with the tying run on. Yeah, things definitely just got a little more tense for San Francisco State here. Burns does have three home runs on the year. Checks on the runner at first. And I'll tell you another thing. I'm sure Burns is excited not to see Nathan Shin in there. Here's the pitch. In there, strike number one. Silva gets set from the stretch. Here he comes with the pitch. It's grounded, foul. Broncos down to their final strike here. And the Gator fans in the crowd starting to be heard as they try to encourage San Francisco State to get this last strike and take home the win to start off this series the right way. Silva looks in the end to get his fourth save of the year. And Burns stays alive. Silva looks in focus trying to end this one for the Gators. And that one outside. Still ahead here with a 1-2 count. Go, Andrew! Go, Gators! 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 Go, Gators!
Still down to their final strike. Burns at the plate, waiting for the pitch from Silva. Oh, and it's right there, but call the ball. You may have heard the dugout from San Francisco State reacting there. It seems like they thought it was in there for a strike. Silva's been living there since he came into the game. Love to see him get that call there. All even now at 2-2. Here it comes. And it's a ball. Full count. And that one is taken for strike three. Silva shuts the door on the Broncos. And the Gators walk away with a win to start this series against Cal Poly Pomona. Great end to this game. Andrew Silva came in and closed it down. But shout out to Nathan Shin. Seven great strong innings today. And he was the main reason the Gators got the win today. Yes, and... Last season, as we mentioned, the Gators were swept by Cal Poly Pomona. They've lost four games in a row against the Broncos, so it's a great way to get off the schneid here. San Francisco Skates going to be taking on the Broncos here at the Swamp tomorrow for a doubleheader, and they will conclude the series with their last regular season home game here at the campus on Sunday. And... Uh, following that, they will play their last series on the road. And that will be at Sonoma State. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is uh, this game is brought to you by the Becca Department. Sadly, our last production of the year for baseball, but we've really enjoyed our time here. And uh, thank yes, you so have. much for joining us. Thank you guys for joining us, and we are out. <laughs>